Welcome to a demonstration of the um, Agent SVN plugin for Visual Studio. This plugin lets you connect Microsoft Visual Studio to Subversion. Now I've run the, the installer for the plugin and it's configured itself as a suitable plugin, a source control plugin for Microsoft Visual Studio, as you can see here. Okay, then now that'll happen automatically if you run the installer. Now this button here will launch the currently active plugin, currently active source control, and as you can see it was the Agent SVN. So if I click on that, two things will happen. I'll get a um, first of all I'll get this dialog which is saying something hasn't been configured. And secondly I will also get the help file, but I will also get this configuration dialog. Now the configuration detail that's missing is the location of the subversion repository. Now, if we look down here, there's, you can set up different types of repositories using different protocols. In this case, I'll just select, select the local one, the file repository, and I'll paste in a file location. Now, in this particular case, there's no repository there. And well, you can see the URL that's going to connect to. Now, the first thing you have to take care, take note of, is given the protocol and the folder details, to make sure that the URL is valid. Um, because if it's not, it won't be able to connect to the repository. But in this case, this repository is not there anyway, so it's definitely not going to be able to connect it, connect to it. But if I try and connect to it, you will get this dialog saying you can't find that repository. Do you wish to create it? So naturally, if you if the repository is going to be created, then by all means go yes. But if you're actually trying to connect to an existing one, hit the no because it means you somehow you haven't set up the right URL. So in this case, we will just create it. We'll create a repository um, at that log folder location. And away we go. We've now got ourselves a repository at that location. Now the next thing we can do is we can go back into the configuration. And if we notice this time, we don't get the message because we it's happy. It's got a repository. It's got a valid repository. So we no longer get the message box. But up here in the project manager section, we can specify something, uh, any alternative command for that launch button. So in this case we'll, we'll use Tortoise SVN to actually um, browse the newly created repository and, and the command line that I'm using here is taken straight out of the help file so if you need more information just refer to the help. Um, but okay so now if I apply that change that means I've now reconfigured this button to no longer bring up the configuration but instead bring up the, the uh, browser for the repository and there we go we've now got ourselves our there's our newly created repository with nothing in it naturally if you want to go back to the configuration for agent svn you're going to have to use the icon on the desktop but there you go we've, we've got ourselves a um a new repository so let's create a new prop and we'll just create a simple winform application and there we have a simple winform application and now we can add that to source control so and as we watch down below, we'll see that it's Microsoft uh, Visual Studio is talking to the Agent SVM plugin. It runs a few tests to check out uh, the capabilities of the tool with some temp, temp project files and things like that. And then it starts adding the files to the repository. And we can check that by back to our repository browser. And you'll see that it's starting to add the files to our to our folder location. So there you go. And it's also locked files because they're, they're going to be checked out. You'll notice in a minute it'll be as it progresses through the as it recurses all the way through all the files in the project, it will start checking them in. Now on this this is a very slow it's a fairly slow machine, um, um, low end machine. We use it to make sure that the software runs on low ends. It's only two gigahertz and it's got less than a megabyte of memory. So on a on a high-end machine it'll be much quicker but as you can see it's now it's now checked them all in well it's actually checked them in and it's we've got the lock as you as indicated by the tick so we can, we can next thing we can do is we can go again using all the standard menus of the IDE itself none of these are actually these are all stock standard uh, we can go check in so if we check in that and we can bring up the, um, the check-in dialog we can add a comment And 
and just proceed with a check-in. And once again, if we go back to our browser and do a refresh over here, it's, you can see that the, the locks are slowly getting removed as it, as it goes through the files. And eventually, once it's completed the check-in, we are now complete. You can see the icons have changed, everything's been checked in. And I can even put the, for example, view the history of this thing, the first item. You can see here is the file, that was the, the file details for that particular thing, that the particular item. Okay, so what else can we do? Okay, well now we can run all of the standard check-in, check-out, compare methods that are available for the standard Microsoft menu items. So let's let's check out this item for it. And again, you'll notice it's now it, it's check the item out and once again if we go back to the repository we can launch it through here we will notice that we've actually got that file item is locked because of the configuration because we asked for locking on the um, lock on checkout inside of Agent SVN it's, it's locked the file and it's given me the username of the file now let's just put a simple change in to this, this code If I now do a compare on that, you'll get the stock standard difference tool that comes with Agent SVN. And the first thing you'll notice is it's not that good. But you can put in your own differencing tool, whatever difference tool you, you like. So we'll do it right away. Now going to the icon on the desktop, I can launch the configuration tool. And right here in the middle section, there is an option to specify a, a, an alternative differencing engine. So I'll use the win merge as an example. Again, this example has come straight out of the help file, um, and I'll apply that change. And now, when I do a difference, I will use a, the difference, the alternative difference tool. And there you go; you get a much better differencing tool with far more options, ways to merge, and so on and so forth. So, so the first thing you'd want to do is change that differencing tool to something, whatever your, whatever takes your fancy, whatever differencing tool you choose and there's plenty of them to choose from but and I can, I can check this in I've made my change I'll put in a comment my first change and I can't spell but okay check that in and away we've done we've checked it in now again you can view the history of that You'll see there's my comment that I put in. There's the first revision. There's the second revision. And yeah, there's the, there's the change that I added. Naturally, and again, all the menus work. Again, if I actually check that out for edit, I've now got my lock again. Let's say I make some massive change. I might save that. I might even, you know, and then I don't particularly want that change. As per standard menus, that Microsoft provides, I can just undo that checkout. And naturally, it'll warn me that the local copy is not the same as the, the version in the, that's in source control. So the local change is going to get lost. Uh, do I want to proceed? And if I go yes, it's now thrown away my change and put back what was in source control. Um, now, all of that's coming through the stock standard Microsoft source control interface. And because Agent SVN implements that interface, it'll work with any tool that implements that interface, and that includes things like MathLab and Power Builder and uh, Microsoft SQL Studio, Management Studio, basically anything that um, that implements that interface will work with this plugin. Now, what what we've done here is we've added an item to Source Control. Um, now, that's not always the way things work. There might be cases where you've, you've actually got a project already in source control. So let's simulate that by going to the source control menu and removing the bindings. Microsoft calls these the bindings. So if we unbind this project, we've now got a local, we've, we've got a version of um, a solution file that is no longer bound to source control. 
and you can see that because none of the all the source control menu items or icons have gone. Now this would be your typical example where you've got a current system in source control and we can still go repository browser and go F5. We can see that it's still in source control. It is in subversion, but it's not bound. Now in this in this instance, what you would do is then use the binding option. So we'd actually just do the opposite of what we just did. We'd go to the source control sections and we'd go to the change source control menu and it would bring up this binding dialog. So now what we're trying to do here is bind the solution to an existing project in the source control. So we click on the bind option and up comes this agent SVM binding dialog. Now I'll get rid of that because that is a bit of a cheat. That's, that's what we need to use. But if I now go, so you, can ha you can't see this very well because it's the, the, the colors are very bad. But this, this AUX path is the actual uh, repository URL and you're not meant to change that because it's it, you're trying to bind this project to your, your repository but if I hit this list button it'll give me a hint as to what I should use and when I hit list I get a list of all the projects at that report there is that that URL location that we we're talking about and these are the projects that are actually at that URL location and it gives me an example of what I should type in and it's basically I have to pick a project and then pick a, a, a postfix in this case the trunk so if I if I take that 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 is basically the project I'll, at this URL I want to connect to this project and specifically I want to actually be working on the trunk so if I copy that and I put that into here and you can think of this as this URL plus the project name will fully define the project so if I go OK away we go it's now valid it's 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 accepted that as a valid URL and if I go bind on the next one again it it, it uses the same one and now it's valid as well so so we've now bound the solution to that source control repository and we go okay to, okay to apply those changes and and down the bottom you can now see it's now starting to talk to the source control to checking all the items in the project and the solution to make sure it's they're correctly bound and this is the stock standard Microsoft dialog and it actually makes some sense if you um, if we take a moment to think about it what it's saying is that the file in the source control for the solution and the project is different to the local file which is not unexpected since we just changed the local solution file and the project file and so it's just saying what's going on and the simple thing is to just protect the local changes because because if we don't we will lose the binding information so we just go OK um, and that means that the local project and solution files which contain the correct binding information are protected from the checkout and that's basically what that dialog means and it's now complete and you can see it's actually checked those two files out um, because it had to put the binding information into those solution files and that's that's exactly what that dialog was complaining about so now we have bound the project and the solution to the source control and it's happy it can see those items in that that's as indicated by the little locks it can see all those files in that source control so all we have to do is check those in and again we just go added bindings added the bindings to the solution and we can check it in so this binding process is the process you use if you want to connect to an existing project um, if you don't have if you've got all new projects obviously it, it will automatically do the binding for you as we sh as was shown in the first instance so it's a much simpler process if you um, if you um, always adding new items to the source control but for whenever you need to bind to an existing item then you'll need to use that binding approach and again there's more information about how to do that in the help file and just if that is all still working um, we can go check it out and once again it's got the little tick there and if I go to the 
rip up browsers once again it'll show that I've got that file locked as it shows there um, I mean you can do multiple things you can do you can do multiple checkouts you know it, it basically works just like any other version control um, it, it, because it's using the common interface um, so there you have it and I check in and so it works just like any other version control uh, if you've used version control in Microsoft Visual Studio this is no different because it's implementing the common interface so that's it that's basically a little rundown on, on how to get Visual Studio um, to talk to Subversion using the Agent SVN plugin. I hope you've enjoyed it.